Hey, if you're watching this, that means that you are a brand new coach and we are really, really excited to have you on the team. But I wanted to give you a few tips, some things that are gonna make you start out and be really successful. And I'm gonna be really honest with you. If you do these things, you will see success but you have to be consistent with them. That's really a big part of this. Being consistent and making sure that you actually do treat it like a job because it really is. If you have to do them or if you don't do them at all or if you are not consistent with them, then you're not going to see success. I wanna be really clear about that right out of the gates, okay? So the very first thing you wanna do when you become a new coach is pick a program to do. My personal favorite is 21 Day Fix. It was the first one I started with. It's just three weeks long. It's amazing. And I got really super great results, but it doesn't matter. We have so many programs to choose from. We have several that are three weeks long. Whatever it is, you want to be excited about it and you want to go all in because the most important thing is that you truly learn to take care of yourself. You share all about how you're taking care of yourself and then you're helping other people do the same but it really does start with you and that's one of my very favorite things about the job you're not going to help people if you're not helping yourself you won't help people complete programs if you're not completing programs you won't help people be consistent if you're not consistent you won't help people learn how to use food as fuel if you're not learning how to use food as fuel. You won't help people break bad habits they've had for their entire lives if you don't break the bad habits you've had with your health for your whole life, okay? It all starts with you and it all flows from you. So your first job starting right now is to figure out how to take care of yourself so you can feel your best. That includes the workouts, that includes the meal plans, the nutrition programs, and that includes also your emotional and spiritual health as well. Because if I've learned anything, it's that, that they all go together. I can be killing it with my workouts, but if I'm not on track with nutrition, I don't feel my best. I can be killing it with my nutrition and my workouts, but if I'm not spending time with the Lord, then I'm not feeling my best. I can be doing those things and I cannot be taking care of my emotional health and I'm still not feeling my best. So it really is a holistic approach to feeling your best. Okay. Now that we have that established, I want to talk to you about planning your month and how you can see success in your first month as being a coach because you're going to go all in you're going to do the programs you're going to share about what you're doing and people are going to be really super interested in what you're doing but you have to have a plan of how you're going to get them started and that's where your challenge group comes in if you're new and you are <laughs> you may not know what a challenge group is just yet that's a fancy name for it, where we help women see success it's the group where you get to encourage women. It's the group where you're doing the program together. It's the group where you are taking their hands and saying, listen, if I can do this, you can do this too. So you're gonna plan your very first challenge group, okay? You're gonna put a date on the calendar. That is probably the most important part of this. You have to set a date for it. It's like if you plan something with a friend and you're like, hey, we should hang out sometime and you never hang out, versus if you say, let's hang out on Saturday, at a coffee shop, in wherever, we're gonna meet there, be there, they're gonna show up, okay? You have to put a date on it, that's just what we need, okay? So here's how I always, always plan mine. I get out my calendar um, for the beginning of the month, and I put on it when I'm going to start my challenge group. So if you don't have a physical calendar, I really do recommend getting one, and I always recommend putting your challenge group on the third Monday of the month. You might wonder, why would I put the challenge group on the third Monday of the month? Why would day one of my programs be on the third Monday of the month? And that is so you have time to talk about it. So you have time to tell people, hey, I'm going to start this fitness program on the 16th, and I would love for you to do it with me. That's so on your stories and on your posts on Instagram and on Facebook, you can say, hey, I'm starting this program, and the start date is the 16th. You have to have a start date. So you can invite people to do it with you. If you don't have a start date, you're going to feel really lost when you're like, hey, like, come do this thing with me. So a start date for your program, okay? So you're going to start 
your challenge group and your program on the same day and you're going to get a group of people who are going to do the same program with you that way you can encourage each other and do it together okay now now that we have the date established let's talk about how you actually get people to do that program with you because that's super important you can pick a date but if you're unsure how to get people involved with you, you're not gonna be able to help anybody. And of course we wanna help people and of course we wanna make income and that is going to be started when you start getting people to commit and do programs with you. So I'm actually going to share my screen with you and you're gonna see I'm on my coach office. I've already logged in. If you're new, this is what it looks like when you log in. This is your dashboard, okay? But for your daily activity tracker, you're going to go to grow my business. You're going to go to daily activity tracker. And right here, this is your job, okay? I said your first job is to take care of yourself, yes. But when it comes down to your work time, as a coach, these are the things you're doing. You will notice, so cool, that part of your workday right here is work out, or take a scheduled rest day if that's what's going on, and drink Shakeology or your other supplements, like if you have pre and post workout, whatever, okay? So I've already done that today, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark those done, okay? That's the first thing you're gonna do. I love that we put it first, because like I said at the beginning, you won't see success if you're not doing those things. It's impossible, literally impossible, don't even try, okay? So we're on Monday, you'll see right here, 20% of my workday is done just by taking care of me. The second thing is connect, invite, and follow up. This is a fancy way of saying, talk to people about the program and the group you're about to start. Talk to them that you're gonna say, or you're gonna start 21 Day Fix or um, MBF or whatever program you've chosen. Talk to them about starting that program and the fact that you're starting on August 16th or whatever date you pick. <clears throat> so this first one, again, these are your work activities, okay? Initiate connections and expand your network. What this means is when you're on social media, you are just connecting with people who are like you. Okay, this is not surface level, I love your shoes, unless you really do like her shoes, you can comment on that, okay? But here's a, just an example of how I do this. If I'm going on vacation, I wanna know about the place I'm going. Let's say I'm going to Destin, Florida, okay? So my connections the week before I go to Florida are going to look like me searching for people in the Destin area and then asking them for recommendations of their favorite restaurants because one, that's me just initiating connection. Who cares? They may, they may come and follow me. A lot of times they do, to be completely honest with you. But what I want to do is I want to build friendships with people and I want to get the down low on where I'm going. There are so many different ways to connect. And I try to connect with people that I would genuinely want to be friends with. And a lot of times that's how I make new friends on Instagram. It's really a lot of fun. And you know that you have something to offer them. They hopefully have something to offer for you in their friendship or in their response to whatever you're connecting about, okay? Another way I like to connect is I watch people's stories. People I follow, I watch their stories and I respond genuinely and make connections, make friendships with people, okay? So mark it when you're done. Next one, invite at least five people to join a BOD group or learn about coaching. We're gonna just forget about the or learn about coaching part for right now because what I want you to focus on is helping people start and complete fitness programs with you. That's your focus right now, okay? So what it looks like to invite somebody to a BOD group. First of all, you have to know what your group is, which is why we talked about establishing your date and establishing your program. But let's just say for the sake of explaining all this that you're starting 21 Day Fix on the 16th. What it's gonna look like is you talking about on your story, on your phone like this. By the way, just a little tip. When you're talking on your story, pretend that it's your best friend, okay? Don't overthink it. Just talk the way that you talk to your best friends. It will come across way better than you trying to be somebody you're not, okay? So you're talking about on your story, the fact that you're starting this program. You can do some polls. You can do some questions, whatever. You're going to make posts about it on your Instagram, on your Facebook, that you're starting this program on the 16th. You can also call and text your family and friends and say, hey, I'm starting the 21 Day Fix on the 16th. Would you want to do this with me? I would love accountability. That is an invite. Do not overthink inviting people to BOD groups. Don't overthink it. You are asking them to do the program with you for accountability, okay? So do five of those each day. 
The third one is going to be follow-ups. It's exactly what it sounds like. So you connected with somebody, you invited them last week, your group is about to start. You say, hey, we're starting in a week. I know that you said you had interest. I just wanna follow up and see, have you decided to commit to do this program with me? It's following up with people that you already talked to, okay? Next one that you're gonna do each day is you're gonna be on social media showcasing the benefits of what you're doing. So showing your workouts, doing little workout clips, talking about what you're learning, talking about how you're growing and changing, showing before and after pictures, like being proof that what we're doing is working for you because everybody wants to feel their best. They do. So when they see that you are making progress, you're changing, you're growing, you're feeling your best, they're going to want in on that. They're going to watch. They're going to be interested because everybody wants that. Okay. And you get to be this example of doing it the right way, moving your body and eating well. Like that's the only way that this can be sustainable. So you're going to showcase that daily on social media. I already talked about updating your stories throughout the day. This is a peek into your life. People want to see what you're doing and how you're making the workouts and the nutrition programs fit into your lifestyle. If you're busy, great. Showcase how you're working and even when you're busy. Showcase you getting up early, doing it late at night, doing it on your lunch break. Showcase how you are meal planning. If you're picky, like you're using your story. If you're picky and you're still making this work, make it a point to say, listen, I'm picky. Like I don't even like salad, but I'm going to figure out how to get vegetables into my diet, even though I don't like salad. Okay. So really using your story and your phase of life to explain how you're making this work is a really wise way to do it. And then of course, respond to people. Okay. Social media is social media for a reason. Respond when they like things, respond when they comment on things, respond when they comment back on your story. Relationships matter so much. The people you're connecting with today on social media will probably be the people that you end up signing up three months from now. They want to know that you're real. They want to know that you're relational. They want to know that you care. They want to know that you're trustworthy. That way, when they're ready to start, they know they'll sign up with you. All right, the third thing. This is once your challenge group has started. So again, let's say 21 Day Fix is starting on the 16th. Your role, your job just begins when your challenge group begins. Your job is not a saleswoman. The sale gets you to your job. You're selling them most likely a challenge pack, which is the workouts, pre and post workout or shakes and the meal plans. That's our total solution. Okay. But your job didn't end when they checked out. That's when your job began. Your job is to help people get results inside of your groups. So what's your role in your challenge group? Once they're in there, once you have three people doing the program with you, what are you going to do? You're going to contribute to your challenge group, which means you're going to check in every single day. You're going to put in a sweaty selfie. You're going to talk about how you felt that day. You're just going to contribute. So you lead by example in the group of not missing check-ins, of being vulnerable, of um, sharing what you're eating. You're going to just contribute, okay? We always say, be the best challenger. However you want your clients and customers to act and respond in your group, you lead the way by doing that first. Bring the energy. Bring the consistency, okay? Number two is you're going to recognize achievement. This is just celebrating them, celebrating them when they do things well, when they finish their first workout, commenting to encourage them, when they finish the program, like hyping them up, when they, I don't know, when they get behind and they catch up, whatever it is, you're the hype girl. You're the one in the group that's encouraging them to finish the program and finish what they said they wanted to do. You're the girl that says, listen, you said you wanted to like complete this program. You said that you had this goal and I'm going to help you do it. You're the hype girl. You're the encouragement. Okay. Next one is follow up with new Shakeology users. This is just in general, having good customer service, like asking them how it's going, maybe sending them recipes, asking them if they're pleased, asking them if they would like a different flavor, just like making sure that they're doing well. Okay. And then of course, responding to all of their questions make sure they know how to contact you because they will have questions um, about who knows what. But if you want to give them your phone number, that's fine. I do that many times or through Instagram or Marco Polo or Facebook. Just make sure they know how they're supposed to contact you. And then the last thing is do personal development. This is one of my other favorite things about being a coach is it's not just about being a physically healthy person. It truly is about total health. So 
If you need recommendations for personal development, let us know. Basically, there are two types of personal, it's personal and professional development, okay? Personal development for me is usually reading my Bible. I understand that not everybody here shares the same faith as me, and that's totally okay. So if that's not your thing, that's okay. If it is, sweet. Professional development is different, okay? Personal is you. Professional has to do with your business. So I might read my Bible or, um, I don't know, listen to a podcast from somebody like Jordan Lee Dooley for personal. Actually, Jordan Lee Dooley could be professional. Jamie Ivey would be more personal, okay? But then professional would be something that I could apply to my business. So that might be like, I don't know, reading something about productivity or reading something about time management, listening to a podcast about social media. There's a difference there, personal versus professional, and it's 15 minutes a day of pouring into yourself, pouring into your mind, okay? This really is about being totally healthy, not just losing weight, not just the physical journey, okay? So if we were on a normal call, I would use this time and I would allow you to ask questions, but you're not here right now. So make sure if you have questions about anything I just said that you are asking me or you are asking your mentor because we want to see you succeed, okay? If you feel overwhelmed, I want you to know that's okay. Every single person that starts anything new will feel overwhelmed at first. You can't know everything the first day you start doing something, but you will learn as you go. Reference this video as much as you need to. Make sure that you have a plan going into every single month. That is one of my biggest tips for you. Right before the month starts, put the date on the calendar of the program that you're going to start and start talking about it. Start inviting to it specifically and saying, I'm starting this program on this date. Do you wanna do it with me? Okay, and then you're gonna break it down. You're gonna have a conversation. You're gonna get people started and then you're going to get to walk them through programs and you're going to get to help them transform their health with our programs. And it starts with you. It starts with you being the example. It starts with you going all in. It starts with you getting results so that you can help other people do the same. The very last thing I wanna say is this, the best coaches, the most successful coaches are authentic and real in how they share their journeys and they ask their mentors a million questions. If you feel like you're annoying your mentor, you're doing it right. You should have questions. You should not know how to do everything. You should be messaging them weekly, asking them how to do things. If you don't have questions for your mentor, that's silly. To me, that means that you're probably not working as much as you should be. When you do these activities that I just shared with you, you will get into situations where you feel unsure, and that's what we are here for. We're here to help you with conversations with people. We're here to help you with invites. We're here to give you feedback as your mentors because you want to be successful in your business and build an income and we want that very same thing for you. We also want you to help everybody that you come in contact with. We want you to help them become the healthiest versions of themselves because we know that healthy women really do change the world. And what you've decided to just start is to be a coach you get to impact women to be the healthiest they can be. Those women are going to impact their families. Those women are going to impact their friends. Those, those women are going to impact their workplace. Those women are going to impact their children and their nieces and nephews. They're gonna impact everybody around them. And you are too. You are starting the best job and we want you to see success. And if you do the things that I just talked about on a consistent basis, I promise you will.